What folks, how's it going? Have I got a cracker to talk about tonight? This film that I um, discovered, uh, I read about on the internet only yesterday. And tonight I've watched it just like that because I found a copy of it on YouTube. Which means after I'm done here, if anyone's listened to this, you can go and watch it straight away. Uh, this film is a Turkish film and it's called Baskin. B-A-S-K-I-N. Baskin. I'm not sure what that means in Turkish, but um, there's debate um, amongst... Well, I've, I've done a lot of reading about this film, obviously, on the internet. Um, and there's debate as to whether... Some people are saying Lovecraftian. Some people are saying, eh, not really. But I've just watched it, and I would say it is absolutely within the realms of love, Lovecraft. Not nothing, you know, there's nothing direct to Lovecraft, but it is absolutely within that sort of um, genre. Definitely, you know, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, but it is. It's a very, very gory film. Um, there's a lot of un, uneasiness when you're watching it. And there's a lot of unpleasant sort of images and tension that build up. It's a very slow burn film. Um, in fact, it's an hour... How long was the film on? An hour and... Uh, the film's on for about an hour and 35 minutes. Something like that. And it takes about 40 to 45 minutes for them to actually get into the nitty gritty of the story like into the main sort of place where the the mo you know this stuff takes place i'm not going to go into it anymore i'm not going to tell you you know what happens i'm not going to do that but um because honestly cause because because of the fact that you can literally go and watch it now I'm not going to tell you. I'm just going to let you let you watch it. What you will need to do, though, it took a bit of tinkering because um, it's in Turkish. Obviously, if you're Turkish and you speak Turkish, you'll be absolutely fine. But I don't, obviously. Um, but when you go on YouTube, you can go on to. Um, hold on a minute. Let me have a look. I'm actually having a look now. Yeah, you go on to. If you're on a telly, if you're watching it on a telly version of YouTube. You go to the the captions bit. Yeah, and it will come up and uh, ask you your preferred language for caption, which is slot uh, subtitles. It'll come up. And that's how I watched it last night. Obviously, you have to read a lot of it, but... um, um Yeah. Hmm. You know what? I've just, I just thought, I actually really want to talk about this film. So what I think is... If anyone's listening and they want to go and watch it first, maybe, yeah, maybe do that. And then if you feel like coming back and listen to what I've got to say about it, then do that. But I, I just, I'm sitting here and I've got it on now because I'm obviously checking out how to do the captions and that to try and tell you a lot. And I just want to talk about it. So I'll, I'll do a little, I'll do a little talk for about it because obviously <clears throat> it, it was, it was, it was really good. It was really good. Um, I'll give you a basic outlook. So anyone that anyone don't want to know any, anything about it, turn off now. Yeah? Spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. <laughs> anyway, the story basically goes, there's there's these police officers, they're in this cafe, cafe, just chatting and talking, having a bit of a silly conversation about football and betting, and, and then it turns to like, like sexual and a bit, some sort of bit seedy sort of elements of that talking about shagging animals and stuff <laughs> as you do <laughs> um and then the uh people that run the calf sort of there's a bit of tension between them and they end up having a bit of a fight um but during this you see this hooded creature thing whatever the hell it is um in like a robe carrying this bucket of like just meat and blood and stuff and he carried it to the, to the back door of the calf and he knocks and he hands it in and then the bloke bloke's cooking this is the meat it's strange right because it's it's well how they've done it but they've they almost made me 
like this meat, just looking at it, it just made me feel sick. It just made me not want to eat meat again. You know, just, I don't know how, what they, I don't know how they achieved that in my head, but they've, they've made me think, this is disgusting. Probably the thought that it might not be flipping animal. Um, but yeah, so he's cooking this meat and it's just, it's, there's this whole background of like, just tension and sort of like dread going on during the whole thing. Even when they're talking about football, there's this just, it's just, there's just something running in the background of the film and in your mind, and it just makes you uneasy. It's really good. Um, so anyway, they get they get called away to this. Um, it's like they get called as backup to this. They're called to this. I can't remember the area of town, but it's like a dodgy area. And on the way, they they're driving there because they've been called by some other coppers. And um, on the way there, they're talking about this area, and one of the, the drive, I think the driver who's driving their van says, I've heard all these sort of st strange stories over the years from this area. Things go on here that can't be explained or whatever. And so that sort of sets the tone up again. And, um, oh, there's a, there's a bit I forgot. I forget it. I'm not going to go through it in that much detail. But anyway, they get to this area. And suddenly this naked person runs out in the road and they hit him. No, they don't. A naked person runs across the road and they, 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 it shocks them. They get out and have a look. And there's all these frogs on the road. Why the hell there's loads of frogs on the road? Probably because it's a little bit creepy, and a little bit disgusting. Um, so anyway, they carry on driving and suddenly they, 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 they hit someone, stood and standing in the road and they're dead and they crash their red their, their van into the river and when they get out there's all these weirdo sort of people sitting around like um like, like a campfire but like a like a drum fire like a you know um in like a barrel and they're really creepy looking people and this is their you know they're almost it's almost like like weirdos that you'd find in like innsmouth from Lovecraft stories and these weird towns you get. They're just very weird people. Um, and they, the, the coppers get one of the, uh, one of these fellas to take them to this place that they're looking for. They're trying to get to, to back up. So they go through the woods and come out in front of this massive sort of grand old house. Well, it even looks even more vast than that, to be honest. But, um, and there's a cop car out the front, but it's lights flashing and they're like, what's going on here? So they go in, they're looking for their, their their colleague, I guess, who who radioed in for help. And they venture into this building, and the tension that I felt watching this film, all, all the way through. But at this point, I remember sitting there last, like um, the last. Well, this was about the last forty minutes where it really gets kicked in, and I sat there and I paused it, and I was like, I've got to go out. I've got to go to the toilet now. Because I could the tension that was building up, honest to God, because I'm thinking it's dark, like, and I've got to go to the toilet. This little bit of childish brain at the back of my head is thinking, I've got a feeling that in a few minutes I'm not going to want to go out to the toilet in the dark. <laughs> it's that ridiculous. It sounds that sounds pathetic and ridiculous, but I'm being honest. It created that sort of mentality in me while I'm sitting there transfixed. But I, you know, I was just absolutely fixed on this film. And it drew me in so much that I'm thinking, you know, almost it's just almost like daring yourself to carry on, to press play, to carry on with the film. So anyway, yeah, it got to this bit when they're venturing into the building. And um God, I nearly ran out of breath there. <sighs> and they're venturing into the building. And then there's all sorts of like symbols on the walls and sort of like hanging sort of things and like weird little I don't know, sort of little like, things people have made, creepy looking things that are hanging from the ceiling. Um, and they walk into this one room and they saw, they find this, he's a copper, probably their colleague. They don't, they don't know him though. And he's just standing there in this dark room, beating his head against the wall, like just continuous. And when they go over to him and stop him, he's just got this strange look on his face and he, and he's making all these whimpering noises. 
And again, that just adds to it because you think, what the hell are we in, what, what are we in store for here? You know? And um, so they venture further and they come to this like a stairwell and they shine the torches down and it's just pitch black. You, I'm just sitting there and I'm just like, don't go down there. Just get the hell out of there now. Get out now and don't look back. That's what I'd have done. But of course, they, they go down and um, ugh, what they find is like, it's it, it well this right this is a point where i was i was i didn't know what was going on and basically what they just found was just this like it's just like a torture chamber full of people that are just so fucked up that like i don't i don't quite get how, i mean how they got there it's some sort of cult in a way it's some sort of cult Christ, I'm rambling on this one. Sorry about this, guys. My brain's a mess. They find like a cult down there, and there's all these fucked up sort of people, and um, they're all writhing around on the floor and like, like burying their faces in in blood and shit and stuff. And um, suddenly they realise that these coppers are there, and all hell breaks loose, and they just start attacking them. And it's just, just the imagery is just so startling. It's like, um, it's just shocking seeing it, you know. But it, but on that same note, it's exactly what I'm looking for in a horror film. It's that, it's just, it's dread. It was just dread because I didn't know what was going on. So anyway, they, they, uh, there's like a blackout and the coppers are like, you know, probably been hit on the head and passed out. And they wake up, they're all chained to the walls. And there's all these flipping weirdo freak things rising around in front of them. And suddenly down come down the stairs comes this hooded uh, figure that we see earlier in the film. And he walks around for a bit and he takes his hood down <clears throat> and he's like this um, really deformed sort of looking. I can't even explain it. He's like a really small fella, not probably not a dwarf, but. Probably a bit, bit bigger, but very, very small. Sort of shaved head. And he's... Now, I was reading... I, when I was reading about the film, I was reading that there's there's a guy in it who's got this... Like, naturally got this sort of skin condition that has made him look different, should we say. And I didn't know any more about it, but obviously it's this fella, this little fella. And um, he just looks very very odd but it's it, it, it it's very in keeping you know it, it's very sort of shocking when you see it not to be harsh to him but um and apparently it's his first acting gig as well and i tell you what he did pretty good he did pretty good but anyway it turns out this fella is like the the what would you call him just probably the, the he's probably like um he's not like a god but these 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 freaks are worshiping him, you know what I mean? Like kissing his hand and that. Um. So anyway, he goes up to the guy, these police officers that are chained up, and starts talking about, um, are you ready to be uh, a passenger on this journey? Of of um, this is these and these this when he starts talking, this is quite good because this really gives me Lovecraft vibes. If you hadn't got him up until now, you probably will now, because of the things he's saying and he's talking about being a passenger on this journey and not needing your eyes to see what's beyond. And uh, are you ready? And what does he say? Are you ready to become one with the cosmos? And all this weird stuff like that. And I'm thinking, what? where are we going with this? And, um, and then he proceeds to stick a knife through this fella's eyes. And it's, I had to, I was kind of covering my face as much as I like, I say like, you know, I, I find this sort of horror really, you know, it's what I look for. But the gore, you don't always need the gore. You know what I mean? They could have just showed the knife going towards his eye and cut away before it happened. And I would have probably, you know, your imagination does it for you, you know. 
But anyway, they showed it and it's, oh, I was kind of wincing a bit. Um, and then when he took his eyes out, he proceeds to, there's this, they open this sort of like little trap door thing in the wall. And this, this thing with a goat mask comes out, but it's crawling. And then it turns out it's a woman because they're like, her tits are hanging out and that. And she's crawling along and they get the guy who's got no eyes now. Like, they get him to shag this woman thing. It's so fucked up. Honest to God, it's so fucked up. Um, and he, he the, 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 the weird little boss dude says, don't let me down. I don't know, you know, I don't know what exactly, what that means. But, yeah, he gets him to shag this uh, woman creature thing. And I don't think he's happy, because then he goes to the other one of the other coppers. And um, he says, maybe you are better suited to this or something. And I, he, it seems like he's about to do the same to this other copper. But his mate from across the room sort of shouts and says, he's only a kid because he's, he's quite a young copper. And um, he gets him to go over to him instead. Um, and it... Are there, there's a flashback a little bit earlier in the film where it shows this young copper and the boss dude, not the boss dude, the, the main copper, who's pretty pally with the young copper. I think they're, uh, the older copper knew his dad or something, and he's sort of he you look after him in the force. Anyway, there's a flashback where they're sitting back in the calf from the beginning, and they're talking. Um, and at one point, the older copper says, have a look round. Are we the only ones here? And um, the young copper looks around and he spots this hooded figure. And he's like, boss, what's that? What is that? Um, and the older copper says, up until now, I've been the only one that could see it. And it's this guy that's in the office that, that he's just torturing them. It's very strong. And I know this probably doesn't make much sense to me now, rambling on about it, but it doesn't make... It's one of them things that's really confusing. But when he goes over to this older copper in the torture sequence, um, he talks to him and he, and he seems to know him, you know what I mean? So this flashback, I think this older copper has been seeing this hooded figure around and maybe not thinking it was real. Do you know what I mean? It's very strange because this flashback, I don't even know if it was a real flashback, if it really happened or if they were imagining it. I just don't know. But anyway, this this freak boss dude seems to know this older copper and he sort of says, you've been looking after this boy. You've been looking after him. Um, um, this is, I don't know what, this is going to sound so, when I'm... When I listen back to this and when you listen, it's going to sound so sketchy. I apologise for that, but it's literally how my brain is now after watching this film. Um, but long story short, the little bald-headed torturer, boss dude, he um, proceeds then to slice his throat, the older copper's throat. So he's dead. Um Oh, this is so confusing. Then he goes back over to the young dude, but he has bro he's bro um, managed to break free a little bit. Oh, but f oh God, Jesus! But just before that, sorry, I've gone I've gone back slightly now. The woman, the the woman creature thing that the uh, the first guy that guys always put out had sex with. This is so fucked up, right? She waddles over to this, like, wall, stands on this huge tray thing on the floor, and then she's, like, squatting down and making these noises, and I'm thinking, she's not doing what I think she's doing, is she? She fucking is. She, 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 and then she stands, sort of, she's squatting and making all these noises, and suddenly this, I'll say, baby drops out of her fuck it's so fucked up man it's so fucked up but 
And then this another weirdo guy that's part of the cult comes over, scoops his baby up. But at this point, you see it's not really. It's not. I mean, it's not. I'm not. It's not bad makeup or anything, or effect, or a doll. It's literally a lump of meat in the sort of shape of a baby. And he sort of scoops it up and sort of caresses it a bit and walk and, 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 and walks off of it. And I don't know what that signifies, but it was just such a fucked up moment. You know what I mean? It's it's hard watching these sort of films because I do like this sort of film and I, I look for this sort of horror. But when you see it there and then, you're like, you, you, you're like, what the fuck am I doing in my life watching this? You know what I mean? It's like a double-edged sword. On one hand, you love it. On one hand, you think, Jesus Christ, what am I doing? But anyway, that happens. And then you, it's literally like, I don't know. You know, there's, there's, it's, that doesn't lead to anything. It just literally shows you that scene and that scene's over and then it goes back to the, the, um, the, uh, little bald headed torturer boss god dude. Um, and anyway, he goes back over to the young guy, the young copper. And at this moment, the young copper has this sort of like, like an out of body experience where he's seeing the older policeman dying in a chair. And he's talking to him and he's talking about, I've got the key to getting out all of this, to getting out of this. And he's literally, where the, where the guy in real life has cut his neck, in this, this either, it's like a, either a premonition or some sort of out of body experience, this, this young policeman's having. But he literally pulls out of his neck a key, a real key. And then the next minute you're back in the present where in this torture chamber, and the little bald-headed dude is about to stab him in the eye, I think, to do the same procedure again. And he grabbed, and, and um, the copper has actually got this key for real. And he, he and he jams it into the um, little bald-headed dude's eye, and he escapes. Honest to God, it's that weird. It's that messed up. That my my description of it is messed up. <laughs> Fuck you now. Oh Christ! No, hold on, hold on. I've I got a little bit wrong there. I'm just reviewing it now. I went for memory a minute ago. He don't jam the key into his eye. He jams it straight in the middle of his forehead. That's right. And then this little bald freak dude falls back and seems to be either in pain or dead. And the uh, then the young copper escapes. He breaks through his chains. And he picks up this chair and just starts smashing it into this little dude on the floor anyway yeah so i got that bit wrong yeah but anyway so the young copper escapes and he uh does that and then he he, he makes it back up the stairs and out of the building um and as he's coming as he comes out of the building he, he goes through the woods again and he finds himself back out on the road and this is this is this is like a real twisty bit he comes back out onto this road. Suddenly, there's his headlights. Bang. He gets hit. And what? Guess you can guess what he gets hit by, can't you? It's the flipping van that he was in at the beginning, near the, you know, halfway through, that hits the person on the road and careens into the river and they get out. See all these weird people. And this, you know what I mean? It's like, a, I don't know what... Good twist, but I don't quite know what it means you know what i mean whether they're just in he's, he's locked in a cycle or what i don't know and that's basically the end that's basically the end but it i mean you've probably watched it by now but it is so it's so worth watching it's so it's so creepy one thing that disappointed me a little bit is all the talk when they're in the, the dungeon torture basement chamber thing whatever it's called um all the talk of the cosmos and opening up your minds to what's beyond and that i i, I was kind of hoping that we were going to see some kind of vision of like um you know a gateway or another realm or we were going to see some kind of hint towards there being like an elder god or something that this 
you know, this little bald guy wasn't, I didn't want him to be it. I wanted him to be the, the spokesman for some being outside of our dimension or our universe. Do you know what I mean by that? Just, oh, and also, you'd have watched it by now. When he, when he escapes and he comes outside the building again, because he's escaped, if you'll notice, like the whole building's draped in red light. And I was sat there when, when he was coming out the doors and it was all red. I was thinking, hold on, this could be a really good moment where you, he could stand outside them doors and it could show us like what he's seeing. And what he's seeing is, it's like you're realising that he's, he's not, like this house is not in the middle of the woods. It's literally like another dimension or something. Do you know what I mean? It's like he's not on earth. It's like it's going into this building. It's almost like a portal to somewhere else and he comes out and he could have and this was in my head though you know what I mean he could have been faced with this just like this otherworldly horror of like what you know what is this 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 realm this landscape that could have been just otherworldly you know what I mean I just it was in my head that's all but I just thought <clears throat> that would have been a really good moment like the horror of realizing you're not even you can't even escape you're not even on earth anymore you're not even in in this dimension anyway that was just my little little bit of disappointment there because i thought that's what was coming i really did because i mean the, when they went in the house wasn't bathed in red light so why is it bathed in red light now you know what i mean anyway but beyond that i thought i think the film was absolutely brilliant and I just, I just can't get over how, how uneasy it made me feel. So uneasy, and the build up to it, it was just great. It really was great, and it, it is almost everything I was looking for in a, you know, a, a Lovecraftian cosmic horror sort of thing. Like I say, there's there's people online that are debating whether it's Lovecraftian or not, but I think it, it absolutely is because it's it's completely. A realm in a step into the unknown of mystery and of 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 dread and um and obviously this 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 cult they worship i still think there's something beyond the little bald torturer dude there's something beyond him i'm telling you i don't know what it is but i, I you know so they're a cult that's that's completely in keeping with lovecraft again um Anyway, uh, you know, you watch it and you'll you'll make your own mind up. But I personally think it is well within the realms of Lovecraft. And uh, yeah, I ain't got much more to say to be honest. So I'll leave it there so I don't bore you. But um, take a look. I'll put the link in because you can literally go and watch it now. It's, it's. I mean, I don't know why it's on YouTube, but it is. Um, put the captions on to whatever language you speak, and off you go. Anyway, thanks for listening to this video. It's been about, what, half an hour? 28 minutes? Yeah. So, uh, thanks for listening, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Cheerio.